Alrighty. Okay, so vlog number one. What are we dealing with today? Ooh, lots of snow. It's a snowy one out there. It's Christmas Eve and everybody's happy. Everybody's not sad at all. Cause it's Christmas Eve. So anyway, I'm heading down to, what am I gonna do? Well, the van's a write-off. I've just been busy um, and lazy, mostly lazy. Not busy at all, I've actually had a lot of free time. I'm just super lazy. And um, so the van's in disarray. But why it's in disarray is because I tried to go out on a little test camper. I was gonna test out the van, go out for a trip, maybe like six, seven days. And on day one, my batteries depleted, went down to zero. I've got two lithium batteries. They've got 100 watt hours each on them, so it, they shouldn't be run down that quickly. Anyway, I discovered that it was too cold for them. Those divas, they've got to have the perfect temperature to operate properly. We're not performing unless it's 22 degrees Celsius. Ba -da -da -da, 2022 Adventure Time! Look at all the lovely, beautiful dogs. Okay, step one. Let me fix that. Let me fix that too. Step one the batteries are in parallel. Easy peasy. You just put the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. I know that because a YouTube video told me that. And the next part is hooking up the rest of the batteries, which could be fun, could be a lot of fun. Mm. Cause I don't remember what I fucking did before when I unhooked them all and just taped them to the side of the box like that. What the fuck was I thinking not to label any of my messy shit? New song I'm working on. Stay tuned. Follow my Spotify. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm definitely going to record this because if it does make a big spark and blow up, then at least it's entertainment. All of a sudden that started working so that must be okay so that's what it looks like when everything's hooked up inside the battery pack I'm feeling hopeful feeling pretty optimistic about this it wasn't nearly as difficult so far as I expected it to be so I'm pleasantly surprised this is my favorite lookout point so far Beautiful time of day as well, and uh, they have garbage disposal and an outhouse if you're feeling desperate. Ooh, it is slick here though on the ground. At least they salt it. Oh my. Oh my. A lot of tourists. A lot of tourists this time of year, I guess. Look at that one's full too. And animals have gotten at it. This bag, someone just left their bag outside. What a bunch of assholes, man. Someone left the full garbage bag just hanging on the side of that trash can over here. Animals have gotten to that. Wow, dude. Super disappointed in the people using this place. Wow. Another full garbage bag. That's ridiculous. Anyway, beautiful view though. So I'm gonna take my garbage with me. Set a good example, even though there's nobody here to watch or witness it. Except for you, of course. My only friend. So when you first started doing this, this kind of digital art, did you have a regular job? Like, negative, sort of like, I don't know. I'm gonna have to stop you from saying like, right? 
So my van's had an overheating problem since the moment I bought it. I've been told that it could be many things, but one of them could be an air bubble in the coolant line somewhere. So I've got to do something called a burpee. Oh no, wait, that's something different. I've got to burp the coolant line. I'm not even sure I can get the hood open right now. Because I keep pressing the release and there's no... You know how there's usually that like thunk sound? Oh, there it is. It actually happened on camera too. Okay, let's go outside then. If you can't see down there, maybe you can, but it's... It's low. Jesus. Ah, for sure. Oh, jeez. Maybe there's a straight up leak. The hose just straight up blue. I hope that worked because that is the cheapest, easiest solution to this problem of overheating. I had to put that whole bottle of coolant in there. Where's the coolant going? I don't know! <laughs> Happy day, because it effing worked. So the coolant problem I was having turned out to be quite the problem. So I brought it down to Williams Automotive Services to have some expert eyes take a look at it. I was leaving big piles of coolant everywhere I parked. And I was went through about... So now I get to show you what living... I get to show you van life without a van, which is basically just homeless life. So here we are. I just dropped it off at the auto place and now I'm walking forever through the winter. To go try to find a coffee shop, hole up there, I got my backpack with my computer in it so I can do some work. Look at me, like a little babushka lady. I gotta, I gotta remind myself to bring some survival stuff. If I broke down somewhere where I didn't have cell phone signal and I had to walk to get help, I would be fucked. I got my jeans on. I've got hot shots for gloves, no toque, just a scarf. Anyway, check this out. Look at the roads. If you're watching this from any other part of Canada, you might be thinking, wow, are you in the Arctic? And I go, no, I'm in Kelowna, BC. And your next question might be, wow, do they not know how to do snow removal properly? I'm almost near the Starbucks. Hopefully they're open and not closed. That would suck. I would probably die out here. Anyway, I'll catch in, catch in a bit. This is my last will and testament if someone finds this camera with a frozen corpse wrapped around it. Burn all my stuff in my body. Hey, yeah, speaking. Awesome, thanks Peter. I'm just gonna walk on over there. It might take me uh, 20 minutes or so. Walking around outside with a mask on. Like a total square. Like a rube. Like a model citizen. Um, anyway, but in reality it's just the best way to keep me warm. I'm walking to the garage to get my van back. It's all fixed, the water pump's in it. It's ready for pickup. It's me. It's gonna be a $750 bill. So, whoever said living in a van saves you money, not always. At the very least, I don't have to pay rent and pay for all the mechanic work on my van. But I probably spent over $3,000 so far. And that's not including any of the build. That's just fixes, fixing the engine parts that have gone on it. There she be. Woo! Extremely glad to have the van fixed and in working order again. First thing I'm gonna do is go to Apollo's house and play some music. Who would do something like that? Now you gotta learn to love and live this 
swim. Alrighty, so I'm sitting here in the dark in the back of my van precisely because why, Michael? The battery, 10 volts, that should be over 12. 0% on the battery. Why is it showing 0% on the battery? Well, your guess is just literally as good as mine. I left it on last night, it was at 70%. I only had the heater running. <laughs> By the time I got, can you feel, can you feel how defeated I am? By the time I got back here in the morning and checked on it, it was at 14%. And I was like, oh damn, what happened? Maybe the batteries are gotten cold. So then I kicked the heat up, tried to warm the batteries up. And when I came back to check on it in about half hour after that, it was at 0%. And now I'm getting an E1 error reading on the charge controller, which is this thing right here. So what do I have to do? Well, for the second time inside of a week and a fucking half, I have to open up my battery bank and unhook everything, pull the batteries out, keep them warm tonight, and then take them in to someone who knows what the f they're talking about. Sorry, I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little angry. I just spent seven hundred fifty dollars fixing a water pump in the engine yesterday, and now today my thousand dollar batteries are completely acting up. So here we go. Adventure on, everybody. Look at that. I'm learning. I'm learning, everybody. You didn't think it was possible, did you? Almost felt like exploding in ex expletives. Fucking can't say the word. Yes. I'm trying to make a vlog. Can't speak. Too frustrated. Anyway, so the next part is I got to take this off. This big heavy top thing. And that's where the batteries sit underneath there. Yeah, I think I need to take the positives off first. Oh, shit. So just to recap a little bit, my batteries failed on New Year's Eve, which was yesterday. I spent the night in that cute little cabin. Wood fireplace and everything, keeping me warm and toasty. And now, on New Year's Day, I'm finding out that all the battery places, and there's not many, that specialize in lithium batteries, are closed for the day. It's Saturday, so they'll be closed tomorrow for Sunday, meaning I have to survive two more days without any heat or electricity in the van. Adventure awaits. Practicing gratitude right now. Grateful for being alive, being healthy, having the van in working order, being able to drive it around, having friends and uh, people who care about me enough to check in on me and offer help and guidance. I'm not doing too bad. So, keeping it cheery for now. Of this virus, when the sequence was released on January 11th, as the Wuhan secret. All right, so I have arrived in the beautiful burg of Vernon, BC, Canada, and I've arrived at my office for the day. A&W has never stirred me wrong. I can stay there all day if I wanted to, if I was feeling that crude. Uh, I'm gonna stay warm, use their internet, and get some work done. So spending my time in environments like this wasn't exactly what I had in mind when I set out on my van life journey. But them's the breaks, at least for now. I've got another day tomorrow to survive without heat or electricity. I'm very tempted to go buy one of those heater buddies, the propane heaters. But uh, I've got so much support around me. I've just I'm gonna go spend the night in that cabin with the wood fireplace again. They have an awesome cat as well. I've been thinking a lot about reading signs of what life is handing you. And any particular situation that you find yourself in, you could view it as an obstacle, or you could view it as a sign to turn around or switch paths, try something new. But how do you discern the two? I've had almost non-stop problems with the van. I shouldn't say it like that, but I've, it seems like that. I bought the van for $3,000 a year and a half ago. To date, I've spent almost $4,000 fixing the engine. That's just the mechanic cost. Then probably another $3,000 into the build itself. So I'm about $10,000 in on this van. And I keep having these situations, these obstacles. Now, are these obstacles telling me to try something new, try a new path. Maybe van life isn't right for me right now in this moment. Maybe it's not the thing I should be putting my energies towards. Or 
Is it a test? Is it an obstacle? Is it an obstacle to overcome? Is it going to make the journey more enjoyable or rewarding once I overcome these hurdles? That's the question. So I don't know, but I'm open to that question, thinking about it. I'm going to see what the battery experts say about my lithium batteries. And if they are toast, if it's going to cost me like a thousand or two thousand dollars to replace them, or I have to figure something else out, that's going to be a pretty big sign, I, I gather, because I'm almost at my limit. But I want to do this so badly. I have this vision of streaming on the side of a mountain, um, streaming live music on the side of a mountain, traveling around BC, making videos of my experiences in the van and also the towns and places I end up and all the cute charm and characteristics of a community. There's so many beautiful people across this province and indeed the whole world, but I can only explore so much of it at a time. So and I want to start with BC. It's glorious here. It's beautiful. Beautiful BC. Bring cash. Especially if you want to drive around it. 